And before we wrap up, let's take a look at the force experience between two infinitely long current carrying wires, which I'll call I1 and I2. And the main thing I wanted to point out here is the, is the setup associated with it. For the differential lengths, we'll define it in this direction, DL1 and DL2, to describe a line segment. And we also have, so these currents from the right-hand rule, you'll see that they'll give magnetic, they'll have magnetic fields going in this direction, right? So this would be the magnetic field due to the second wire, and this is the magnetic field due to the first wire, and they're going to be in the phi direction. Uh, note that these are relative phi directions. This is like if this was the z-axis, or in the other case, where if this was the z-axis. So they're not completely the same coordinate system, but I'm using phi so that you can denote, you can have an idea about what direction the field is. And then if we were to look at the source observation vector, we'll define it right here. With the way the source observation vector is defined, what we're trying to calculate here is the force that's on wire two due to the magnetic field created by wire one. So each of these little segments create a magnetic field, um, and we're going to add up all of them along this segment. So if we were to take this equation and write it out, the Lorentz force, F is going to be equal to I2 DL2. This is the, the current that we've experienced cross the cross product with the magnetic flux density or mu h1 uh, so the b1 which is mu h1 and we're going to integrate this across wire 2 so each of these current segments uh, will experience a force due to this magnetic field here and we're going to add them all up to find the total force that the wire experiences now remember we're going to have to use uh, the bio severa law to figure out what the current what the magnetic field is due to this wire. So if you do that, we're going to get, it's going to rewrite this here, wire two, I two, DL two, cross, and then if we just plug in the bio severa law, we're going to add up all the components of wire one, and we're going to have mu I DL one cross R all over four pi R squared. So as you can see here, this is a this is a very heinous integral to do because you have you have a one cross product you have to do an integral and then you have to take that cross product with this other integral. So it's it's quite yucky. Uh, so we're we're not going to do that. But instead, uh, one of the, the main thing that I wanted to do emphasize is the approach. So if you were to brute force it this way, you end up with a very hairy equation. But if you, you another thing you can do instead is that if you uh, come up with a closed form expression for B wire one uh, using something, you remember how the easier way of climbing up with a closed form expression due to a long wire? That's right, we can use Ampere's circuit law, right? So if we use Ampere's circuit law to come up with an expression for uh, the field due to B wire one, then we can plug that into this integral here And then that would be a much simpler expression because instead of this cross product and this integral, you can substitute it with a simpler expression from this Ampere's current law. So I, I mostly just want to point out the main take home is that we have this expression. It works great for simple charges. Um, and you can also uh, apply that to different kinds of, char of current densities. So the J current density or the sheet current or just a regular line current. But in some cases, and in a lot of cases, it might be easier if you're in a situation where you can directly have a simple expression for the magnetic field to first just calculate the magnetic field and then figure out, uh, and then just disregard the other current and just look at the magnetic field and do the magnetic field to current uh, relationship to find out what the force is. So to review, we introduced the Lorentz force which is F equals QV cross B. We rewrote it so that you can have differential amounts of force due to different amount kinds of current density. 
Uh, one important concept is that because the force is always perpendicular to the direction of travel, magnetic fields themselves uh, do not do work. And then separately, the, the, the reason for this ugly example here is to build a general concept is that if, if your magnetic field is due to a current, instead of trying to force in an expression and evaluate an expression that involves two different currents integrated across uh, multiple, multiple wire segments or current densities, what you, what you would ideally like to do is come up with an expression for the magnetic field due to one current, and then go back to this Lorentz force equation where you're just looking at the movement of charge versus a magnetic field as opposed to uh, two different movements of charges.